So, as much as I wish the backstory to this was so much more interesting than what it really is, it's <laughs> Um, so, I was born with bicongenital hip dysplasia, which is like a real fancy, fancy, schmancy way of saying that I was born without a right hip socket. Why did I put this in my hair? That I was born without a right hip socket, um, and that, um, I would need a whole lot of work to correct it. Um, so just a little, little backstory here. I am adopted. I was, um, put up for adoption at the age of 18 months due to medical neglect for my mother because, my biological mother, because every time I would sneeze, she would cancel my appointments to have my legs looked at. Um, so my doctor reported her to uh, CPS for um, medical neglect. The um, social services lady showed up to um, talk to her about said medical neglect and she lit up a joint in front of the social worker and the social worker was like, nope, not happening. Now don't get me wrong, I am very 420 friendly myself. Um, I have nothing against the idea of my mother smoking pot, but like, you gotta remember I was born in 1988. So this was in like the early nineties when this happened. And um, it was like super frowned on back then. Hold on a second. So yeah, as I said, in the early 90s, this was like super, super frowned upon. And um, <laughs> so the caseworker was like, eh, no. And I went into foster care. Fortunately, I do not have a horror story there. I was not in foster care long. Um, I was taken in by the family that I was raised by. And, um, you know, I had a wonderful life. I was a very, very fortunate like, I, I was very fortunate for how my life turned out from foster care on. Um, I was very well taken care of. I wasn't, I wasn't abused or mistreated or any of that, thankfully. Um, even in foster care, I kind of had it, I had it relatively simple, although the woman that I was originally sent to um, live with already had um two foster kids and she also had a special needs child living there and these were her kids like she had adopted them and i was really good friends with like obviously the littlest one and um you know like whatever we were like best friends growing up but you know how that is and but she just, she was not really giving me any more of the medical attention that I needed than uh, my mom was because she was so busy with the other child that needed like medical care. So um, she ended up giving her to the mom that raised me, my, my mom now, and um, I ended up staying with them permanently which turned out to be the best thing for me um and then um let's see what else but anyway okay so the story is when i was born like i said i was born with bicongenital hip dysplasia and um fancy way of saying that i was born without a right hip socket well they thought they were able or without a complete right hip socket is what I mean. And they thought they would be able to correct this by putting me in a harness. And, you know, they're all like, oh, it's a one in a million chance that the harness won't work. And that she'll be able to walk again, like normally and whatnot. And, of course, I had to be that one in a million child that the harness didn't work on. So... I was in the harness while I was still in the care of my parents, my biological parents, 
uh, well, parent, and um, it just, it, it didn't do the job. Um, like I said, I had to be that one in a million, you know, I had to be the one that would be complicated. And, you know, and I, ever since then, and knowing that I am like that one in a million, I hate when I like have like, you know, like when I had my surgery, they were like, oh, there's like a one in a million chance we'll sever an artery or something and, you know, you'll die. And I'm like, I am that one in a million. So like, every time now that somebody says that, I like panic because I'm like, <laughs> You know, I am, I am that one in a million and it makes me so nervous. So like, I just, just don't say that to me because like, I will freak out. But anyway, um, and like I said, so they, they knew that they were going to have to do surgery and they were going to have to basically go in and create an artificial hip socket for me. Um, and that was how I ended up in, in foster care because, um, my mother wasn't taking me to these appointments for them to figure out how they were going to go about doing this. And <laughs> well, okay. So from there, um, when I got with my adopted family and no, I'm not going to use names, just know they were a great family, but I'm not going to use names because I just, I don't do that especially on the internet. They don't want to be out here. I don't want to put them out here, but they were wonderful, amazing people. Um, they were, um, they put me with them and immediately I was in the hospital from like, by before I was even two years old in the hospital all the time having these surgeries done because you know, I'm little, they can't, keep me under for too long without it being dangerous and all of that shenanigan shit and <laughs> you know um so they couldn't keep me under for a long period of time because I was so little and so they would do like a little work and then wake me up and then the next day they do a little more work and wake me up and then the next day they do a little more work and they'd wake me up so essentially it took five surgeries before the age of two to put in the first hip socket um and and it was it was it was rough my mom will tell you that it was very hard it was very hard on them to see me in so much pain i would cry all the time um i would ask to go home because i didn't want to be at the hospital anymore um and and, and you know just kind of to make things like even sadder like my biological mom would come to visit me while I was in the hospital, but she actually didn't want anything to do with me. She, um, she didn't want anything to do with me. Um, so, you know, and they made arrangements for her to like come visit me and whatnot. And my, my mom tried to like make arrangements for her to come visit since I was in the hospital and, and she just, she wanted nothing to do with me which is really sad when you think about it. Um, and when she was there, she wanted to talk to the adults or spend time with the adults. She didn't really want anything to do with me specifically, which sad, sad for little baby Christy. Anyway, <laughs> um, and then like, you know, there was, there was supposed to be, I was supposed to continue having surgeries until I was 18 to, um, basically grow for lack of a better term the socket so obviously you have a baby you have a baby size leg you have a baby size hip socket you have a baby sized leg and essentially the idea is that as your baby grows so does their leg so does their sockets it starts to form to their their changing body um and, and most people don't think about this because like if you don't have a condition that like affects your bones or your sockets or whatever um go to part two sorry i'm also making a tiktok over here for this um anyway so um 
I must be able to think about this because if you don't have like a bone condition that like truly affects how you're developing, there's there's no need to to really think on it. But um, so basically, like I said, as you grow your hip socket, it conforms, well, any of your sockets, any of your sockets, any of your limbs, your muscles, whatever, they conform to fit your growing body. Um, and that's, that's what they're supposed to do, right? Like that's what they're supposed to do. Well, if you don't have said socket and you don't have the muscle that helped create said socket, so it has to be artificially created and inserted into your body for those muscles to develop around the artificial socket, that socket is not going to grow. Um, so I had, and, and I couldn't show this one in the TikTok that I made that inspired this story time because of its location. So it is literally right on my hip line. Like, but showing it would be borderline nudity um, because of how it is located. And so, like, when I say it's, like, if you ever look at your hips, like, nobody else has this line on their hips because nobody else has had the surgeries that I've had unless they've had the surgeries that I've had. And there is this, like, scarry-looking line. And, um, and it's been there since I was a baby. Now, what's interesting is the scar has stretched. It has grown. It has evolved with me as a person. But... It does not, it has not faded, it did not go away, it didn't get less than, it's still there. Um, and it's still very prominent, and that is because they kept going in in the same spot. So, <laughs> it wasn't like, you know, oh, I had a surgery here, and I had a surgery there, and then they cut here, and they cut there. No, they went in the same spot every time I had a surgery as an infant. So every single time. So there's a lot of scar tissue build up there. And there was a pin. It, it, like you gotta remember, this is the early 90s. We didn't have the technology we have now. And then, <laughs> so there's a pin that was in there and it was like holding it in place, which that pin is now gone, by the way. And I'll explain. Um, it was gone before I had the replacement. But anyway, <laughs> so there was like a pin in there and you could see the head of the pin in like pictures of it and whatnot and like i would go and get x-rays just to make sure it was where it was supposed to be and whatnot and you would see it in like the x-rays i wish i had these pictures i don't i wish i could show you guys um this scar but i can't because like i said it'd be like borderline nudity because of the location where it's at and tiktok and youtube would probably be like <laughs> no <laughs> but um it's it's pretty it's pretty gnarly and um over the years, I was supposed to have, as I said, um, multiple surgeries to correct this condition and to basically force the socket, said socket, to grow, which is basically just a really fancy way of saying they put me under every single year from the age of two until I turned 18 to basically elongate and widen said hip socket. For some <laughs> reason, this was never done. Um, and artificial limbs, whether they be knees, they be elbows, they be shoulders, they be whatever, hips, whatever, are only made to last about 30 years. Makes sense. I mean, that's a good long, long time. And when you're in your like, 60s 70s and you usually have hip replacements and all that done it doesn't really matter because you're you're older and by the time you have to have it done again if you're still lucky enough to still be alive you won't you won't really care and you may not even have it done because you'll be done with life at that point and <sighs> Um, well, like I said, I had mine put in it too. They did not do the surgeries they were supposed to do. That would probably have elongated the shelf life of my hip socket. So if I'd had my final surgery at 18, I should not have had to have a replacement done until I was almost 50. 
and that's that's about a normal normal time frame for most people to need a hip replacement if you need one if you're unfortunate enough to need one um <laughs> so i was originally unfortunate enough to need one so I was doing fine. I was living my life. I was doing Zumba. You know, I was doing all the stuff that I norm that I do now without any problems until I hit about, what did I say, 32? It's about 32, wasn't it? Baby. Amy. Ah. It was 32, right? What? Did I start having trouble with my hip? Yeah. I said 32, didn't I, when we met? So I was about 32 when I started. <laughs> Were you sleeping? No, I didn't hear you. Oh, when I started having trouble with um, my hip um, again. And hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this for a second um, so I can get dressed. So I'll be right back. Okay, so as I was saying, I was around 32 when my hips started going bad the, um, the last time. Um, I saw a orthopedist here who was supposed to be the, like, leading orthopedic doctor, and, um, she was going to specialize in my hip and, you know, all this other shit and she was gonna fix it and I was gonna have a great quality of life well first things first this did not go as planned first of all because she did not specialize in my hip condition so she said um, and she um, wanted to put off my surgery until I was 40. She was like, you're awfully young. You'll have to have this done again in your 60s. And I was kind of like upset about this because I was like, I would rather have the hip replacement at 32 when I'm still, you know, basically living life and have quality of life than wait until I'm 40 and have even more problems than I have at this particular moment in time. And, and, and hear me out here because if you do have hip problems and you don't correct them when they start, um, it can lead to problems with your back, your knees, your feet, your ankles. Um, and for the longest time because she refused to do said surgery I was dealing with um my like I was putting all my weight on one time and I'm not a lightweight girl I'm a heavy girl I'm a plus size girly um and I was putting all of my weight on one side so like I was dealing with the frustration of like my good leg which was my left leg going like numb while I was walking, I couldn't feel my foot. I wouldn't be able to like, I was having problems with my back. I still have problems with my back because of this. Um, I was having problems with like my knees hurting. And then uh, eventually it started even escalating into the fact that my left leg was hurting almost as much as my right leg. And um, I was working at the time. I, I do not work now. I don't need to work now, but um, I was working at the time. And this was severely, impacting my ability to work because I couldn't stand like I was hurting to be standing for any extended period of time was extremely uncomfortable um yeah I'll go to part three so anyway so so as I said I was struggling to like just kind of have any semblance of like normalcy um and i ended up <laughs> i was getting shots in my hip uh this did not last very long either because the shots that were supposed to be helping with like the pain stopped working 
after like so many shots just stopped working um uh the first time i went in for a shot it lasted a month which is what it was supposed to do i was only supposed to get these shots once a month second time i went in lasted three-ish weeks give or take um which also fine i could deal with that but then it started going down to where it was only lasting a couple of days and obviously that's not helpful when it's supposed to last a month <laughs> Unfortunately for me, this is also when COVID hit <laughs> and everything shut down, except for, of course, essential businesses. Well, where I worked was McDonald's and we were considered an essential business because, you know, restaurant. <laughs> and I ended up volunteering to be laid off. Um, so basically... Um, they were giving the option to like the the dining room workers, which is kind of what I was, because I mean I could do everything. I was a manager, but um I was kind of like dining room crew basically. Um and they were giving the option to the dining room crew to essentially willingly be furloughed. So because we just didn't have the hours or the placement for them, especially since most of them were minors and they could not be put in like the kitchen or whatever. And um, I ended up, even though I was an adult and could have been put somewhere else, basically stating that um, I would take a, a, a willing furlough. Um, and I, I did take it. I ended up actually just not going back because, let's be real, I hated the job. And I, I just, I didn't need to work at that time in my life. Um, um, when I was finally able to go back, I just ended up not going back. I met Amy and she ended up getting me into some really good doctors. Um, including one that really did specialize in my particular hip condition and in October about what two years ago was my surgery and two years ago I had a full hip replacement huh I thought you said four. I was like, it definitely has not been four years. Anyway, so <laughs> it's it going on two years ago. And, um, you know, he was great. He was an amazing surgeon and he really, he really took into consideration all my anxiety. And, you know, I had so many people that were like, oh my God, well, you've done it before, so you know what to expect. And, um, I was too the first time I had this done, I don't remember that, like, it was two, <laughs> barely remember what I did yesterday, shit, um, anyway, <laughs> and I ended up having the surgery, my wife took amazing care of me, um, I mean, I was essentially bedridden, um, for the first few weeks, after the surgery because my leg was still numb and it was supposed to like gradually come back to feeling so it's not like you know you go home and the stuff wears off and then you're all better and that's not how it works um <laughs> and it was a lot more complicated than even just you know getting feeling back in my leg because um I essentially had to teach myself how to walk again um so basically <laughs> that's what the scar is from the scar is from the incision they made during the second surgery, I had to fix my bad hip. Um, and, you know, that's that's all well and good. We needed it done. It got done. Um, there, was a there were some complications after surgery um, that kind of, like, had me really worried because... 
um, I couldn't walk for like the longest time. Like I could walk, but like I wasn't able to lift my leg. I wasn't really getting any feeling back in my leg. And I was genuinely concerned. And what people don't realize is that when you have a hip replacement and they're recreating essentially your socket, because it wasn't there to begin with. But now they have to make it bigger and they have to make it fit to your body. And not only that, he elongated my leg so that it was even. All my life I have been uneven because of the hip surgeries I had when I was a baby. Well, in this case, <laughs> he was able to basically add that extra half inch in there and even me up. Um, still a shorty. Hold on a second, I can't see the... There we go. Um, still shorty though. Um, anyway, and <laughs> I was like really, really scared of this particular surgery um because like i said i wasn't getting the feeling back and um i was really worried about it <laughs> makes sense you should be worried when something isn't working the way it should but here we are two years later i can walk i can sort of run i never really could run to begin with but i can sort of run and I can ride a bike. <laughs> I'm back in Zumba. I ride a bike. You know, I go to the gym. I'm, I'm pretty well back to where I was before said surgery. Um, just with a little bit better quality, if you get my drift. Um, and so that's really the story of the scar is just the surgery that I had. And it was... I'm, I'm sure if you scroll back two years, you'll find pictures or videos that I've, you know, have posted around that time. Um, cause I obviously didn't post while I was in the hospital very much. I think I did a couple videos, but I was, woo, and <laughs> wasn't really in a spot where I could, uh, post very good content because I was woo-woo. Um, but I'm sure there's some there. And if I find some pictures, I will make a video for you guys and show them to you. But um, I probably won't see those till October because they're in my memories. But um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty gnarly healing process. But that's what the scar is from. That's the story time of the scar. And that's why I said, like, I wish it was more interesting. Like, I don't know, I fell off a motorcycle or some shit. But it's just from surgery. But I say I have a backstory because there's a whole story that goes with it. And it's not just, <laughs> you know, some tiny little scar. This is like, you know, life, life altering type scar. Um... So, yeah, that's the, that's the story time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.